Hello, it's been a while. So this video is a little bit disorganized. I have started a few things and I'm just putting them all in this video. The announcement is we moved, we bought a house. Hooray, we finally own it. And we moved our urban homestead from the little blue house to a new house. So this video is talking about some areas where we were taking over a new property and there are things that other people did that we don't want anymore as well as some invasive plants. So we're talking about our mulching and our no-till practice for how we're prepping the lawn and the plants that I moved and a little bit of tour of the homestead and some things to come like a bunny barn. So uh, it's not a super long video, but it's also not a very organized video, but you'll get all the information you need. And then like, here we are starting anew and hopefully I'll be providing you with a lot of content. And at the end, um, I just mentioned that I have a Patreon, so I'm gonna be posting to my Patreon before here. That will be linked below, etc. Please subscribe. Thank you. I'm always forgetting to start with the before. The before was right here, a huge ass picnic table that is temporarily right here and will eventually be in the center of the future bunny barn because I think it'll be fun for buns to climb on and a good place for humans to sit. But we're going to start preparing this backyard by laying down our cardboard and then um, we have compost from the old house. We have a huge pile of hay from the bunny barn in there. We've got a lot of cardboard and things, so we're going to start laying it down and also make my house not look like, it feels like a trash heap right now, so I want to get that organized too. So I want to talk a little bit about the materials we're using over here. Um, we have an old Hoosier cabinet that uh, was, it turns out it was not in really good condition, so um, we're gonna burn most of it, but I'm using some of it over here. So this area has a problem with these huge rows of Sharon all over here, over here, over here. Rows of Sharon spreads prolifically. We've already found a lot of suckers in here. So we're not afraid to put down some wood to really smother it out. Anything that's gonna help us control what might come up this spring and, and prevent that from coming up. These rows of Sharon's have been poorly maintained and they can really take over. A lot of them are very, very thick, very huge, like this one here. There are also bushes along the fence that are damaging the fence, so we're gonna try to correct that. Some people obviously landscaped the yard but didn't really wanna take care of it. And I'm not sure how shady this is or what we can even get going in here, so I'm just gonna really smother it all out and I'm probably gonna order some mulch from my local um, tree. There's a, a tree trimming and removal company that mulches everything that they remove. And so I love it, because then I have local mulch. Um, so I'll probably get several yards and put it in here to really start this anew, because you can see this is like all very like dirt versus grass. So I'm not sure what's in here. There were some plants that had been planted. There was a path and a picnic table. So there was some type of landscaping done. And I wanna just get rid of that and start new and just allow stuff to break down and make really good soil here as well. But even when we are thinking that we're removing, you know, something someone else did that hasn't been maintained or whatever, we're always also looking, we found, this and Ohio has a lot of native asters and this looks like a native aster. There's not much left, but we've gone ahead and decided we're gonna keep this. We don't know what will be happening here, but we love these asters. They host a lot of beneficial pollinators. Many of them bloom later into the fall, which is really good at the end of the season. So we're gonna keep this and see if maybe we can encourage it to spread maybe around the edges of our yard because of course, as much as we wanna grow our own food and not be mowing a lawn, we also wanna be encouraging native plants when we can. So, in my journey to compost everything, really in my journey not to throw away anything, I was like, what do you do with leftover drywall that you can see, eh, I, can't, I can't point to it, it's right over there by my shoulder. Um, I was looking for drywall recycling and then I don't know how I got around to it, but I found in some permaculture forum that you can totally compost drywall. Drywall is just minerals. Okay, listen, there's like fire retardants and waterproofings, but the thing about it is most of that stuff is 
compostable anyway. Like so much stuff is compostable that I just decided not to worry about any of the additions to modern drywall. Um, so I'm not even checking. And the reason we're putting it here is because I believe this is periwinkle. It's an invasive species that has been used as ground cover a lot in American yards. You'll see it under trees and stuff. So we want to get rid of it. So it's really hard to get rid of invasives, especially those ground covers like English ivy that are like super invasive. So I've decided to start with a layer of drywall and then we'll do cardboard and then we'll do compost and then we'll do leaves and hay. Like we're gonna try to smother the shit out of this and then plant something over top of it that also hopefully is like a really great, strong, hardy native. So instead of putting the drywall in our compost bin, which you could do, we're gonna put it down as the first layer of smothering out some invasives. Um, you can also use drywall apparently to help break up clay soil. I guess. So anyway, that's what we're doing. So we're starting to put some compost down because we ran out of cardboard and because <laughs> this was our compost, everything compost. And I put things in there that I knew wouldn't break down like synthetic fabrics. So it's kind of very trashy. So I just want to spread it out. There's a lot of really good stuff in there, but there's some trash. So I really want to spread it out, bury it, let it get down in the earth, essentially make a mini landfill in my backyard, basically. Yeah. Okay, so how about a little yard tour and I'll point out the plants that we have moved from our old place and um, we don't know what we're planting yet this year. Here we go. We've got our St. John's wort right here with some thyme and we put another one down by the fire hydrant. So we are going to plant herbs all along this tree lawn. We have a pineapple sage right here because it gets real nice and woody and there's a lavender right behind it. One rose bush. I don't remember if this is Reva or Kathleen. I think that's Kathleen. And then another rose bush. That's Reva, I think. And then you could see down on the corner there, that's a lilac bush. And here we're alternating lavender, sage, lavender. Again, lavender, sage, lavender. And we also have some sage right here. This guy just pulled in. He says he lives down the street, so he wanted to know what we were doing. So I told him everything we were planning. So hopefully he'll come back around. I love that. It's cool. I love getting to know my neighbors through growing stuff. So the sun comes in here in the morning. So we're going to do some type of vegetable here, maybe with a trellis. And then this is where we've got our oregano going. Um, eventually we're going to put an IBC tote here and back here we have, there is a mystery plant in there that we don't know what it is, but right along here, these herbs we're thinking will be basils and oreganos because we might do tomatoes here and back along this whole fence, we're going to get raspberries established back here. We'll be removing the tall grasses. We think these beds might stay warm enough all winter that we're gonna try to overwinter our rosemary and we're gonna do another parsley that might overwinter. We think we can keep this warm with all the sun that comes down here in the afternoon and over throughout the day. So the really great thing about this property is this carport here. Eventually, we will be enclosing this and it will become a bunny barn for raising rabbits. And then we just have a really nice big backyard. I think I want to build something here with maybe cold frames um, for getting things going in April. Maybe also along here, we're not sure. And then there's some unruly Rose of Sharon we'll get rid of. We're starting to get this soil good. We've got a compost there. We might put another compost here, we're not sure. And eventually all of this will be gardens or something. There's a lot to take care of. Back here we think will be a great place to build some raised beds and maybe trellis them up. 
and then eventually long term perhaps chickens in the shed we're not sure I'm not really sure how much we'll get planted this summer. A few things for sure, but I think we'll be spending most of the summer building up the yard. Oh, and I forgot, I don't know if you, can, you can't see it, but on the other side of the compost is our one pawpaw tree. So we'll be getting another pawpaw tree to plant somewhere back here because um, we would love to have fruiting trees, of course. And that's it. I haven't finished editing this yet, but I hope when I do, I put together something good. And I wanted to finish by saying I have a Patreon and I am going to start uploading things to Patreon first before I upload them here. I think I have two tiers, $5 and $15. It's just a little something, just um, hopefully maybe I can build a community and um, earn a little bit of income for teaching these things, you know capitalism so i'll put a link to my patreon like down below and i hope you'll come there and subscribe and stuff like that